Hello everybody, this is Frank coming at you with another audio commentary here. It looks like we're going to come right into the action on this one, guys, and I do apologize that I, do, I don't actually have these games. These are just being streamed here. This is actually going to be Team Canada versus Team IG. Unfortunately, this, uh, this team actually is doing very, very well, but I still don't actually know exactly what their... Uh, Basically, I don't know where they're coming from, what their game plan is, or, you know, who they are necessarily. I know that there's a couple of them that are pretty well noted um, on Team IG here. You do have IG Chris, sounds very familiar, as well as uh, IG Illusion, sounds very familiar as well. So, um, this team here did uh, pretty well against uh, Team Canada. Unfortunately, I didn't catch the end there. I do believe, though, Team Canada did win that one. Uh, the last I saw, Team Canada was actually pushing down bottom very, very hard, and actually there was Hot Shot GG on Nidalee, so Nidalee just pounding his, his her way down there, and it looks like though, um, down, up a top lane here, Hotshot GG is going to be now playing on this uh, Skarner here against the um, Yorick of the enemy team. Um, IG, I, I basically, like, and I do apologize guys if I, I, if I don't know any of the background on this one, basically all I know is that uh, they're, they're, essentially they're not, uh, Wow, they're actually not notable enough for me to know them, but we do have a gag coming up here from Illusion. It looks like Hotshot GG is going to teleport away from this one. Huge teleport. Actually going to survive that one. Massive, massive play there. Uh, I don't even know what to tell you guys. That was just a huge, huge play there from Skarner coming out and uh, getting away from that massive gank, which he should have gone down to, but now he takes this opportunity to go back. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to teleport back, but with that gank coming out, actually, his lane was being pushed, so he's able to just go back, shop up, and he's just going to be absolutely fine. Now, picking up that Philosopher's Stone, so he's going to be generating that gold exceptionally well against this Yorick. Um, Yorick actually having now 20 CS of the 26, and Yorick being, or Skarner being pushed out of lane here. Just to go over to a, go over a run through of basically w what the characters are, and it, actually before I go over that though, it looks like we do have Big Fat LP in the mid lane here getting caught up by the uh, by the trundle, and actually a nice st a stun gold card coming out there from Big Fat LP, but a uh, an even nicer kill there coming out from uh, from this Karthus. Is Karthus going to go down here? No, but it looks like the trundle just might. A huge Q there coming out, and the odd one's going to pick up a kill there. So going out two to one, which I definitely think that should have been a uh, a two uh, a two kill for one there. But uh, very nice play there from the Trunna blocking off the the Karthus from getting killed, which I think was a little bit more important. I think that the uh, the Trunna going down is you know less significant than the basically than the Karthus. So because Karthus needs to get back to lane and farm, and when you farm the jungle, it's not quite as good. <laughs> You can see here, actually, Hotshot GD doing a fantastic job. Excuse me, on this Skarner, just farming e absolutely every single creep without fail. And I don't know if he's actually going to be going back yet again to shop because he's pushed so far up. Um, it looks like no, he is moving around on that map. And definitely, Hotshot GG is going to be the one to watch here, guys. These Korean, uh, the Korean, basically viewers and commentators who actually aren't in this game because you can't hear the game noises. And this is being taken from a stream. So if you guys are, um, if you guys get offended by watching material that isn't actually owned by the owner, this isn't actually my game. Um, I don't have rights to this replay, and actually don't know if I don't have rights to this replay. So, or if I if it's like not right for me to be taking so if youtube takes this down then i do apologize but uh from what i've understand from what i understand i'm allowed to do this and uh you know i do want to bring this to the general public because i don't think that these games are actually going to go up on youtube at least not for a very long time so i'm going to give you guys actually the best that i can and uh i do apologize to wcg as well as youtube if uh basically these videos are not um it's not allowed for, basically if i'm not allowed to have these but uh, anyways, that being said, sorry for that little rant there. If you guys didn't check out the game before this one, which was um, Team CDE versus Team Dignitas, uh, I'm not going to spoil that one for you, but that game is before, and I do want to point out that you're seeing, yes, some characters, you're seeing Hotshot GG on the same team as the odd one, as well as Chaos. you've got Elements on there, and... Uh, Big fat LP, so a pretty big smattering of both teams. You got three three characters from Team CLG. One of them actually being their most re recent benched character um, or bench player in Elements, uh, being replaced, of course, with uh, Double Lift. And Chowser taking a spot on support, but. Uh, with these characters here, um, it's a big smattering, and what happened was basically because there, it's WCG, which is a, an international event, they had to represent their own countries rather than represent their own, uh, basically, best interests or their needs or whatever it is, um, and 
it forced them into a position where they had to take the Canadian players from both teams and put them onto one team, and they took the American players from both teams and put them onto one team. The one character player, actually, wow, we've got a huge guy coming in here, and it looks like Twisted Fates is going to come in there and help to pick up that one. Hotshot GG picking up that kill. So, uh, Hotshot GG getting some feed already onto this IG team here, who actually, IG had a fantastic showing in the last game, guys, and I highly recommend that if you if you can, I don't know whether these games are actually being recorded and placed onto owned on the WCG channels, but but uh, they definitely should be, and wow, a huge, uh, a huge opportunity here for Team IG to take up, pick up Dragon, and they're definitely going to be jumping all over that one. And I don't know if they're actually going to get that. Yes, they do. Um, a very nice smite timing there. Chaos trying to pick that up with his ultimate, but really unfortunate there. So evening the the scores here a little bit, but with these uh, the out farming of top lane, actually top lane, yeah, top lane is out farming by uh, 12 CS. You've got mid lane which is uh, actually being up front, but regardless, you've got the kill, basically the kill advantage and now a tower advantage, and they, they still have the advantage after the dragon does go down to uh, Team IG here. So, basically, this is now uh, the balls in IG's court here. They're going to have to do something to come back from this one, and I think Yorick paired up with that Vayne is going to be a huge... Oh, sorry, actually paired up with the Ezreal. Actually, that's not as good as being paired up with a Vayne, but uh, regard in my opinion anyways, but regardless, that's... Um, and you do have actually Skarner coming in here with a nice flash timing in there on uh, this Yorick, but uh, Yorick certainly going to go down there. It looks like the odd one picking that up uh, with his Q there. So very nice kill there, getting actually the extra gold as well. It looks like actually Big Fat LP is going to be in the middle of this one as well. It looks like Trundle and Karthus are going to come in here. I don't know if they're actually going to be able to pick up this kill. I definitely think it would have been in uh, Big Fat LP's better interest to chase them down and get off more damage than he actually did. I think he had a huge opportunity there to pick up a kill and... Uh, he just went the wrong way on that one, I think, as well as, not to mention the odd one, who could have certainly picked up that, uh, uh, helped to pick up that kill as well. But uh, regardless, we do have now uh, things pretty well equalizing. You have uh, basically, just taking a look at this CS, you've got 71, actually, something very notable is the 81 to 93 CS down at bottom lane with the Ezreal and Graves, respectively, so... Chaos, of course, just a phenomenal, phenomenal bottom lane range AD player. And this is going to actually be, um, you know, I'm not exactly so sure how well Team IG is going to fare here. One of the advantages that uh, the North American team, teams have that I mentioned in my previous commentary is that is the uh, advantage of having the... Well, actually, we've got TF actually teleporting in somewhere here. I don't actually know where he's going. I think he's just, yeah, coming up here to try to secure this red. Actually, the red has been walked all the way around back here. Um, and, yeah, they are going to be able to pick this one up. So that went down to the, it looks like actually went down to the Twisted Fate, which is very, very unfortunate because I don't think he even wants that at this point in the game. Um, definitely would have been better off going to the odd one. Yeah, it did go to the Twisted Fate, which was very, very unfortunate. But um, So, wow, a huge ultimate there. Nice snatch up. Onto the Karthus, and Karthus is just going to try to get out as much damage as he can. Um, actually, getting a couple of those Skittles off onto the Twisted Fate, but uh, unfortunately, not enough damage coming out there. A Q going off onto the Trundle, trying to get as much poke as he can to potentially take out that middle turret. Looks like, though, Chaos coming in here with a nice silence, though, but a return on a nice ultimate there. Healing going across the board as well, so uh, Chaos doing a lot of damage down here to this Ezreal. And, uh, wow, that's all I have to say about that one is just, wow, that's a, a lot of damage coming out there from Chaos. And now that they push this so far back, they're going to be able to push in here and potentially do a significant amount of damage to this tower, which is going to lead, actually, yeah, with both characters being back. Um, I don't know if he's actually going to use that speed boost that he, or that attack speed boost that he has, but Trundle's going to come in here to defend this one. Tower going down now to half health, and the Gray Soraka combination is just so powerful. Now, when you have the, uh, the armor stacking, not to mention the heal, but you've got the armor stacking in the middle of what could be a, a, a pretty close engagement down at bottom lane, the armor stacking off of Soraka's heal, as well as the passive coming out for, um, for Graves. One thing to notice, actually, we do have the gold counts there, and one thing that you, you could see there is uh, basically top and bottom lane for Teams Canada was so far ahead of uh, their who they were juxtaposing there. Or at least that's what I saw. I could, I could be very wrong, but just looking at these numbers that we have up on screen right now, um, 
that that's looking like it's definitely the case. You got three deaths on the Yorick compared to the two kills, one death on the uh, Hotshot Shiji Skarner. Um, it looks like though Trundle is going to come in here for a gank, and this could be very, very effective here. Level 7, though, I don't know how well that's going to work against the level 9 Hotshot GG Skarner. Um, I don't know what's going to happen here. The ultimate there coming up from Karthus, changing gears here now, going the opposite way. Juking, though, is Hotshot GG going to actually get away from this one with Big Fat LP teleporting in there. A huge save for his team. Is Skarner going to come in for this one, though? He's going to try to grab the... Uh, Yes, he is. He's going to actually grab the Yorick, and Yorick's going to p get picked off there. And you can see the strength there, not only of TF, TF being able to teleport in there, but wow. Actually, down at bottom lane, you've got something to counter that. All the great action that was happening for Team Canada up at top lane. You've got Ezreal down at bottom lane with that Sona getting in there, dealing a lot of damage and taking out those two bottom characters. So Elements and Chaos getting picked off. However, Chaos now picking up that BF Sword compared to the Riddle's Lantern, three Doran's Blades, and Miniature Boots on the uh, on the Ezreal here, so we're going to see which combination works there. And actually, one thing that Chaos was quoted as saying, that I've heard actually very recently, is that the only way that Ezreal can actually beat Graves in lane is if Ezreal picks up a Riggle's Lantern, and he certainly did that. So uh, that's, you know, that could be the, the potential reason why Graves is actually not doing as well as he could be, because he is actually being controlled by what uh, records would show as a uh, significantly better player than... Um, somebody, you know, who isn't necessarily on the ladders, but is, uh, or isn't necessarily very hot on the ladders, but if he's playing in this tournament and he's faring this well against Chaos, um, you know, potentially though, it could be, uh, it could be the, the downfall or it could be the, rather the doing of Chaos himself rather than the, um, the, the great play of uh, the Ezreal here because it is, I, I, no, no offense to the Ezreal, but it is just, I know, significantly, uh, or it's just very, very difficult to pick up a kill on a uh, on a Graves as Ezreal. Even Chaos knows uh, knows that much. But it looks like actually this uh, this dragon could be going down here. They they do initiate here. Team IG. They've got five characters, all of their team around this dragon. So they're not going to give this one up. It looks like Skarner up at top lane. <gasps> Excuse me, guys. Uh, it looks like Skarner up at top lane is going to continue to push here. And uh, with the ultimate coming out there from the Ezreal, I don't know if they're going to be able to pick up this fight. The odd one actually is going to get caught up here. A huge ultimate coming out from Sona. It looks like actually um, the odd one as well as Chaos going down there, but Soraka actually picking up a kill on the Karthus as she is trying to get away here. So this is going to be a three for one as well as top turret though. So this could be definitely still going into the advantage of uh, Team Canada here. And it looks like though Yorick is going to step in there, try to defend against this Skarner. And uh, very unfortunate for Team Canada there. They're actually going to go down now to even scoring here. So all of those dragons, or so those two dragons going down to uh, Team IG is going to set them very far behind. Or set Team Canada very far behind, and uh, it's going to be very, very unfortunate for them. However, you do have Hot Chat GG at uh, a level higher than the enemy Yorick, and I don't know whether this is, uh, you know, I don't know whether this is going to play out too well for them. One thing to note, though, is that we, even with those two dragons and, and even kills, they're still um, actually now behind in gold. So something's got to be going on here. Um, you do have Skarner with those two gold generating items, as well as the Soraka over top. Actually, no, the the Sona actually has two. Gold generating, gold generating items as well, but uh, with the two gold generating items on the Skarner and with the none on the Yorick, I think that could be something that's setting them far ahead, as well as the fact that, you know, the CS is going very, very well as well, with Chaos actually ahead 20 CS, or sorry, now 10 CS on the uh, the Ezreal here, who just got a significant number of CS just randomly. And now with this turret going down here, not to mention the turret up at top lane, um, that's definitely going to set them set Team Canada ahead here as well. And it looks like actually Chaos trying to go back here. I don't know if that's going to... Yeah, he's, he's going to try to push out this lane. Now that he sees where everybody is, he's not going to be too afraid to uh, basically push this lane down. Um, you do have Karthus trying to loop his way around here. I don't know if he's going to be able to pick up the kill necessarily, as you do have already a BF Sword, two Doran's Blades, um, attack speed boots. That's going to be a lot of damage output coming out from Graves. And it looks like actually mid tower now is going to be going down as well. So just a a lot of uh, a lot of damage coming out across the board here, um, and a lot of turrets just 
You're just going down here and, and wow, Chaos actually staying down bottom lane, trying to push that one out. I don't know if IG could potentially be looking for a very early Baron here because Graves actually isn't there, but um, Graves doing a fantastic job of pushing this down, but now he knows he's actually going to be in a little bit of trouble here. He's got his E to get away from this one, and Karth is actually going to be looping back around, not trying to actually pick him up because I, that's not a... That's not necessarily a guaranteed kill, but we do have actually Skarner using his ultimate here on the Yorick, and Yorick could be going down yet again with the ultimate though coming out. Um, we're going to see who he ultimates here. He's actually going to ultimate himself. A pretty greedy ultimate if you ask me. He would have been better off to ultimate the, uh, the Ezreal in my opinion and use that um, from the very beginning of that fight to uh, basically do whatever damage he could, but unfortunately he does get picked off there. Very nice ultimate timing there from the uh, Skarner. And, uh, wow, he's going to continue to be engaged upon here, though. Those Skittles coming out doing a ton of damage here to uh, Hotshot GG. And very unfortunate, he's going to go down super low. I don't know if he's actually going to be able to stick around here and defend. Yeah, he is actually going to opt to go back now. But um, I don't think this mid tower necessarily needs the greatest defending because I don't think this push is actually going to be all that strong. With Yorick, with that massive amount of poke not being around there, red buff being stolen here as well as a ward going down so just uh, a lot of um a lot of control here coming out from team ig taking out those buffs and it looks like actually karth is going to try to come in here and just slow down big fat lp from going back which is definitely a good call if they were to push very very hard but um or you know take baron but i think it's a little bit too early in the game to be considering something like that and they're i don't think they're fed well enough to uh be doing anything necessarily all that spectacular so, um, we do have a look at actually the gold counts here. We did have Skarner at 7,000 gold. So Skarner definitely got the highest gold. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't see across all of the gold there. But uh, yeah, in case you guys were wondering why I can't do that, I basically don't have control of the camera right now. This is being played at WCG. And it's being actually live stream taken from a stream, uh, WCG stream at own. But they're not commentating it, so I figured I'd do it for them. And if you guys feel like seeing me commentate for WCG, um, on better terms, basically, where I, I get camera control as well as, you know, all that good stuff. Don't be afraid to spread the word about me, guys. I am looking for more subscribers, and uh, please feel free to tune into my channel, um, www.youtube.com slash frankcommentaries, or my owned account, which is owned, um, or fr basically the, the username is Frank, P-H-R-A-N-K. So Frank Commentaries, um, P-H-R-A-N-K-O-M-M-E-N-T-A-R-I-S, R-I-E-S. So make sure you guys are tuning in there, which if you're watching this, you should be tuned in there because that's where I am uh, uploading this to. So uh, if you, unless you guys are working some voodoo magic, then no big deal. Um, it looks like, though, we're just taking a look at these the gold counts here. With Even with two dragons, you can see the caliber of player that's coming out here from Team uh, Team Canada. Just doing a fantastic job, and this is basically what we saw as well with uh, Team CDE versus Team Dignitas. That's just one of the things. CS, as well as just the gold, you know, just knowing exactly when you can get those gold generating items. Um, it's just the clear signs of uh, really, really top uh, top tier players. So it looks like actually a ward going down there at, uh, at Baron, and uh, Elements is actually going to spot this one out here, and uh, he's going to try to pick this one off. Yeah, he is actually going to be able to do that, we, even with Karthus putting up that wall, trying to get some damage out there, um, and actually he could have pulled Baron onto himself and done more damage to himself than uh, actually done to Soraka. Kind of a funny thought, but it uh, didn't happen. Fortunately, didn't get to watch that one go down. And actually, one thing here that's really fantastic for Team Canada is the fact that Chaos is actually at 205 CS. Bloodthirster Zeal, actually, this game. So not picking up the Infinity Edge. Um, not a bad play, but I, I honestly am a huge advocate for Infin or an inf earlier Infinity Edge. But without those kills, it's certainly reasonable to pick up the Bloodthirster as opposed to the Infinity Edge because it's basically it's it's within a closer closer grasp. Now this fight around Dragon, however, I think is going to go very, very heavily into the favor of Team Canada with a gold card coming out there onto the Karthus. Is Karthus going to go down right away? No, he's actually going to flash in here, sectioning off uh, Big Fat LP. Actually, Big Fat LP trying to get that kill onto Karthus, but not being able to do so. A huge ultimate coming out there from the odd one as well. And with Karthus so low, this is going to line up Team Canada for a very nice position to do Dragon in. And actually, um, an ultimate coming in there as well from Karthus. So actually, pretty clever play there. Um, because it's going to give them potential to reinitiate on the dragon, but no dragon is going to go down here, and you're going to start to see a huge up and coming of the uh, the gold counts on Team Canada here. Now three thousand ahead again. 
So uh, they did lose the advantage after losing those dragons early on, but now the comeback is on its way here, and uh, this is definitely going to uh, be a huge, huge advantage for Team Canada, and they're probably going to... Uh, be able to do some pretty good push here and not to mention when they go back and shop they're going to be that much farther ahead it looks like actually Yorick just sending those minions out to chase down the uh, Skarner trying to get away from those ones but Skarner actually getting skittled but with the shield up I don't even think he's going to take that much damage not to mention Elements his good old buddy on the from the bench is going to be healing him up So uh, one thing I do want to point out here, uh, yet again, in case you guys are, you know, for some reason just tuning into this part of the video, basically uh, Team, Can Team Canada is a, a mixture of Team TSM and Team CLG, so Counter Logic, Game Counter -Logic Gaming and Team Solo Mid. Uh, basically, they have to represent their countries, and both teams have Canadian and American players on them, so Team Canada is going to consist of the Canadian players from both teams, which uh, apparently CLG has three Canadian players, and Team... Uh, TSM actually has two Canadian players, and potentially Rain Man as well. I actually don't know the, if there's any controversy there or what, but Rain Man actually was forced to stay home because Dyrus actually went out for him, but um, I don't know if that's because he's not American and Team Canada already had their stuff set up, which would make more sense because CD is basically um, the, I, I, would, I would say, the more American team. Not because of the American players, but because it's being led by Reginald, who's an American. And I think that this team here, Team Canada, is actually being led by uh, by Hotshot GG, and uh, he's a Canadian player. So I would call that the more Canadian team. Team CLG. But uh, yeah, so th not really much going on right now. I think this is, uh, you know, if I was doing a, a commentary as of a replay, this would be an opportunity where I think I would just uh, skim through a little bit quicker. But uh, because this is this is very standard. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't want to downplay how important this part of the game is because it is certainly significantly important because of the, uh, the basically the tension that's being felt around Baron right now. 25 minute mark is a very, very healthy time to pick up Baron. If you can get Baron at the 25 minute mark, um, it's not only going to set your team ahead in gold and the experience and what have you, um, but that pushing power that you get at 25 minutes is a lot heavier than you would get at a later stage of the game and an earlier stage of the game because you're not going to have the items at an earlier stage of the game. And at the later stage of the game, the enemy team could have just the right items to uh, basically counter you out. And not to mention the, the levels, the farm, all that good stuff, the experience. Actually, it looks like uh, Skarner coming in here, trying to get a kill off on the uh, on the Yorick here, but actually this isn't going to go over too well with the ultimate they are coming in. Um, the odd one is actually going to dodge that one out, so not actually going to not actually going to go down there. It looks like though Ezreal coming in here with Big Fat LP getting the stun off on the Ezreal. Is Ezreal going to go down here? He flashes away from that one. Huge ultimate coming in though, and the odd one not going down there. Hotshot GG going down to Trundle. A huge ultimate actually going across from Graves. So Graves actually could continue this hunt here with the rest of his team backing him because he did so much damage with that ultimate across the enemy team. But uh, no, that's not going to be the case here. And they're actually going to take just the Skarner going down. So a huge actually battle there going in 5v5 but um, with uh, with the odd one so low in the, mid, the, the at the start of that fight it's really really unfortunate that uh, that, that basically was the situation uh, and, and Team Canada basically had to opt to drop a uh, drop a character rather than uh, try to continue that fight Looks like actually Ezreal is going to be picking up blue buff. A little bit odd, but he's going to be able to spam those abilities. Not to mention get his ultimate back uh, that much quicker. And you can see here he's going to just jump around the map. It's going to allow him also to, of course, jump walls a lot quicker and uh, a lot uh, more, more often. And he's just going to be able to use that to his advantage in the fact that he can just farm, farm, farm constantly all day. One thing that I am certainly looking forward to in the uh, at the end the later stages of this tournament is the Hotshot GG versus Dyrus, which I actually don't see a lot of. Um, it was I think it was played in the in the NLG Providence finals, but I'm not actually sure if that was the case. Um, it would have been Epic Gaming versus uh, Team CLG, but I don't actually know if that was played. But that's going to be a phenomenal matchup either way. And I do recommend that you guys do stay tuned. These these games are going to be going on to WCG's uh, own stream 
and uh, I don't know whether they're going to be commentated or not, but I'm going to be uploading these as we go here, so, um, you know, look forward to that. That should be very cool for you guys to, you know, get some of that content on YouTube rather than, you know, going all the way across the internet to owned.tv, which is a fantastic site, and actually I'm streaming out of there right now, so um, hopefully I don't get anything banned for doing this, and like I said, I'm going to mention this one last time. I don't actually know whether this is, uh, you know, against their policies and procedures for me to be um, basically recording this and uh, uploading it to YouTube. I hope not, because I am adding my own commentary. It's not the exact same video. So hopefully not, but either way, I'm completely comfortable with removing it if they ask me to. And uh, yeah, just trying to give you guys the best that I can. So again, a big lull in the action here, but you do have uh, a little bit of tension over Baron. I don't think it's actually being considered too heavily right now, as you do have, of course, Hotshot GG down pushing bottom, and uh, just living up to that nickname there, Farmshot GG, trying to do what he can. Looks like actually Karthus and Ezreal, Ezreal, the two squishies, being cut off to the left side there, getting zoned out a, uh, a little bit while some extra damage went off there on the tower from the Graves, and wow, actually a flash forward here. Big wall of pain going up there, but another flash also coming out from the uh, from the graves and Skarner just pushing down this bottom turret here and that's basically going to be the strength of Skarner because he d because he has those gold generating items he's actually not going to be too too great in a team fight he's going to be really good for initiations but in positions where you have to defend that's not really the uh, the best opportunity to have a uh, Skarner in a, into a fight like that and it looks like actually some characters being chased around the map here. A lot of weird kind of wonky positioning going on. And actually, uh, it looks like Skarner getting the ultimate off there with the exhaust going off from the uh, from the Karthus as well. And you absolutely know that Skarner wants this kill. Is he going to get it? Yes, he is. Wow, a huge kill coming out there from Karthus. Getting Karthus is going to have to ultimate here though, just in case the uh, in case Team Canada wanted to go for. Baron there, it's basically going to make it significantly harder, and I think this is a great opportunity for Team Canada to go for Baron. Um, I don't know if that's... Uh, they are pretty low, though, so yeah, I think that Karthus basically put them over the edge where they can't actually go for that, go for the Baron right now, which is really, really, um, really unfortunate for them. But uh, I've been saying unfortunate a little bit too much this game. Yeah, so not not the best position to go for Baron because of the damage that came up from Karthus, but it would, it would have been really good because Skarner could have just pushed top, and they could have actually even just faked a Baron, like gone for Baron a little bit, and if they if the enemy team engaged on them, then so be it. Skarner had a full position there to uh, to push continue pushing top lane, and if three enemies were only seen, then uh, Team Canada could have jumped all over that opportunity and just gone for the Gusto and taken up that kill. See here, Skarn doing a, or sorry, Yorick doing a really good job of farming this top lane. Taking a look at those CSs that I see down at the bottom of my screen here, um, nothing too notable. Chaos staying uh, roughly 20 or 30 ahead, between 20 and 30 ahead of the uh, the Ezreal here. And you've got Karthus at 193 compared to the 201. So everybody pretty well farmed at this point. Gangplank at 113 compared to the uh, the Trundle of 110. So yeah, just all the way across the board, basically everyone who's been matched up in their roles are pretty evenly farmed. Um, not being more than, you know, not being more than 30 off. And that was only on one character who, who even came close to that. Looks like another dragon here going down for Team uh, Team IG, but they are still down 4k gold. Wow! Oh, they got the uh, huge ultimate there coming in. It looks like actually Big Fat LP is going to take out the Ezreal. Ezreal not being able to do any damage in the middle of that fight. A nice exhaust there going off on the Yorick as well as Minion's not going to be able to do it quite as much. And actually the Ezreal, um, the Ezreal Avatar there coming out as well. And a, an ultimate coming out from Big Fat LP. Big Fat LP going to jump all over top of this. Karthus is unfortunately going to get zoned out by the dead Karthus passive here. And uh, really, really good stuff there coming in from Team Canada. Getting a bunch of kills there. Three kills now down. And it's going to be Yorick and Trundle defending this. And they're definitely not going to be able to do that. Not to mention Trundle has that Oracles, which is basically just going to make him that much more precious. So if he does go down, it's going to be really detrimental for Team IG here. Um, bot lane is pushing for them. So that's actually two outer lanes are going to be pushing for them. So that's going to be a little bit of an advantage. But I think what's going to happen here is this tower is going to go down. Um, potentially the next one, but uh, I don't even know if it's a good idea to stay for the middle of this fight, but wow! You, um, it looks like actually uh, Trundle getting pulled out here by Skarner, so Hotshot GG, no one wanted to initiate, and that, that ultimate must have just come back online because uh, it was used so, so recently. 
And uh, it just goes to show you the, the cooldown on that is very, very low. And with the red buff on Skarner here, he's going to be able to zone out this Yorick. Yorick flashing in the middle of this, trying to pick up big fat LP here. And it uh, looks like he is going to go down here to the uh, Ezreal. And it looks like Gangplank actually picking up two kills of his own. So the odd one doing a fantastic job of trying to counter out the damage that's coming in here. And Hotshot G is going to get focused, but he's not going to get killed. Not even close. He's actually going to turn back around here and try to see what he can do on uh, the opposite end of things. And three characters still being dead. So just rotating through the characters who are dead um, trying to get this and another ultimate coming online here so um, Skarner just doing a fantastic job of just pounding out these characters ultimate after ultimate one after the other and uh, down go more and more characters for Team uh, Team Canada here and uh, IG is just uh, getting r basically rolled all over and this goal difference has just climbed a significant amount in the past three minutes um, going down for, or sorry going up for Team Canada from uh, basically being roughly, I want to say, 2,000 ahead to now at this point in the game being 8,000 ahead. So, um, and actually closing in on 9,000, yeah, getting 8,800 ahead, so to be specific. So that's a significant advantage for them. And, uh, you know, having the, uh, having that, uh, Heart of Gold, or sorry, not the Heart of Gold, the Frozen Heart, Shirelia's on, uh, Sorry, Frozen Heart Shirelia's and Force of Nature and the uh, the uh, Frozen Mallet there, or the Phage, is going to just play so well into Skarner's ability to, to rush in, pick somebody up, slow them down, and bring and just ultimate them and just pull them closer to his team. With the Force of Nature, he's going to be able to go in there faster. Shirelia's as well is going to make him move faster, and he's just going to be able to go super, super fast and uh, pick up those kills. Actually, wards, counter wards coming in here for both teams, and it uh, looks like Team IG is actually going to be the only ones ending up with that one. Element's actually going to try to jump in there, face-checking a little bit there, actually. A little bit risky there, because nobody on uh, Team IG was actually revealed at that point, so went in there, picked up that ward, and uh, now that, that point in the map is going to be, I think, uh, like a no-man's land. Nobody's going to want to go in there unless uh, they're going to be aggressive, which you can see here, actually. Team Canada is going to push in here. I don't know whether they're going to be able to pick anything up, though. Um, this is going to be a little bit risky, but this is this is uh, some of the top players in the world here we're talking about. And uh, they could very well be able to take this down. Sona trying to heal, but uh, with this much poke coming out from the, uh, the odd one... Uh, basically, the odd one and uh, Graves and a big fat LP, but it looks like actually York getting picked up here. Nice damage coming out there, and it looks like wow, York actually not going down there. Finally going down to the wild cards of big fat LP. So something he could have dodged the ultimate coming out here as well. Odd one might go down, but no, actually going to stay alive in the middle of all of this. Lots of damage coming out from on to both sides of the field here. Three characters down, four characters down now, and Ezreal the only character left here to defend here. And with the Graves being so healthy right now, big fat LP going to jump to the enemy side here. And a nice gold card's going to go off there, picking up the ace for Team Canada and most likely picking up a win because that was a clean ace. Skarner did go back to shop, which I think was a little bit of a, a bad call, but now pounding down onto this Nexus, this is going to be the end of the game here. Actually, Skarner teleporting in, and that's GG, guys. They're going to pound out this Nexus. So uh, this is Frank, guys, your all-knowing gamer, coming at you with uh, WCG. Team Canada versus Team IG, and it looks like Team Canada is going to take Game 2 as well as Game 1, so they're going to be moving on in this tournament, and uh, just stay tuned to that one, guys. You can check it out at WCG, uh, owned.tv slash WCGTV, or whatever it is, just the WCG channel, and uh, yeah, guys, so that's the end of that one. I hope you guys really enjoyed. That was a fun one, and um, I'm hopefully going to be able to bring you guys more games. Remember, spread the word if you guys want to see more of my commentaries, and uh, this is Frank, your all-knowing gamer. Until next time, guys, peace out.